gigas for girls, tomfooleries for boys, fancies for women, and substantials for men. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am at the beginning of a weekend of highway sales across Kentucky. A lot of them were postponed until now because of the epidemic, and so as a result, all of them are happening this first weekend in October, and I'm gonna show you what I can and find what I can as we shop around. This is the Highway 60 yard sale. This goes around through Western Kentucky through eight counties, so we're gonna see how much we can cover today. This is the first town I'm stopping in. This is Marion, Kentucky. Marion was named after a Revolutionary War officer who I think ended up with the land grant here or something. Anyway, it uh, was named after him. It became a uh, town in the 1840s and a railroad stop in the 1880s. And its main claim to fame nowadays is that it is the middle of Amish country. And so there are a lot of Amish farms and a lot of uh, true country living here. I'll show you a little bit of the town real quickly. We apparently missed the pumpkin festival. And this is the Crittenden County, or as they say around here, Crittenden County Courthouse. There's the old Marion Cafe. And a bunch of buildings that probably are older than they look. And then in this block of 1910s buildings is a yard sale. That is the first stop on our tour of the highway sales. So this one says it's a yard and tag sale indoors with antiques, collectibles, store fixtures and stuff. So let's see what kind of stuff they've got. Bunch of blue willow china here. I still have collectors for certain pieces. My aunt likes the pieces that are marked Occupied Japan. There's a Ford gumball machine. Gumball machines are pretty good sellers. I'll have to ask about that, although it looks like it's somewhat more recent. This part is glass, but it does have plastic inside, so that might be 19. Yeah, plastic there, probably 70s. Here's the old Franklin sewing machine, and this one's got an nice oak cabinet. I'm sure the treadle's underneath, but it also has this neat Egyptological design, so this would likely date to about the 1920s. This is a neat old cabinet, probably 1870s or 80s, a true farm cabinet with real old paint, but it's already sold. Well, my favorite thing in there were the 50 ceramic poodles, but unfortunately the mom poodle had her little tail broken off, so we're going to try another place. A lot of the sales are not listed on any official map, so we just found a place that had three big bright signs, and I assume if they have that many signs, they must be serious. So we're going to go down this country road here and take a look and see what's back here. It's actually a perfect day for this, and this is the first day, so hopefully we'll end up with something really great. Well, there sure looks like there's a lot of stuff, so we'll have to get out and take a look. There's an old pitcher. Okay, I, like, I think I like this. How about two? Two? Okay, you got a deal. I'll All take right. that for two dollars and I'm going to keep on looking. That is pretty. I do like that. I like that too. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, very orange. Mm hmm. No stoppers. Looks like a ceramic class, but they're kind of cute. Ah. For people who saw my video where I misidentified a Boston Terrier as a boxer, well, that's a boxer, so now we know. Ooh. You didn't do it, you <laughs> did it. Okay. I promise it wasn't me. Oh, yeah, these are these I old. $2 for that book. 
Okay, and these are these ones that you put your coins in. All right, that was a little different than what I expected. Well, I had never seen one like that either. No, it's a little different. This almost looks like copper, but it's just wood. A lot of this looks like newer stuff, but I like the piece that I picked out. Well, I guess I had a nose for this place. I only found one thing. It was $2. It is copper luster and it's old. If we uh, take a look at the bottom, you can see the finish is a little disturbed with age. I'm sure that they rubbed it and cleaned it over the years. But if you look at the bottom under here, very hard to tell. There's a diamond shaped mark with a crown on top and that's an English registry mark. Those were used in the 18. 40s to about the 1870s to tell the dates and if it wasn't so heavily glazed we'd be able to tell what year this was made but it's English and it's Victorian and for two dollars the a lot of the customers who used to collect these have uh, filled their collections so they're not as expensive as they used to be but I still think this is probably a 25 or 30 dollar piece okay so we're stopped at Sturgis Kentucky just south of and we are going to get out and look at a yard sale that looks like it has some older things. This is a town that is where I did one of the first two videos I did, the first day I did YouTube videos. I did one at the Sturgis Antique Mall. It's a great mall and I'll have to go back there sometime, but today it's Highway 60 yard sale time. Okay, so ignore the mark price. This little batch here that I'm going to show we got for $16 total. This one is Viking glass. It's an overlay on top, so it's kind of a double layer. You don't see a lot of Viking done that way. And so that was certainly worth the four bucks they had on it. This one's got the label, and this is the Georgian pattern. So it's a more traditional pattern, but it was done in the hot orange color by Viking in the 60s. And then we've got a couple of ceramic things that are just cute. This one's American bisque. You can always tell American bisque when you look at the bottom and you see these feet with this sort of hourglass area that's glazed and the big white feet that aren't. That's American bisque. That's how they did things. And then this guy is the donkey cart with the condiment set and you can tell by the chartreuse that this is 1950s. And these I think were made in Japan. I didn't see the mark on it but I bet it's on there somewhere. And then a couple of things, and again, we paid less than the tag prices on these. Um, this was a whopping 50 cents. It's from the Knoxville World's Fair, and I have collectors for that. And this one they actually gave us for free. This is Tupperware from the 70s, but the thing that's cute about this is you open it up, it's actually a ketchup dispenser or some sort of sauce. So there you go. Nice little haul. We're going to carry on now down the road and see what else is on Highway 60. One thing about doing the highway sales or yard sales in general is you do the cruise by first and when I see a bunch of brand new pine furniture and brand new patio furniture and brand new boxed appliances, kids clothes, things like that, it's not that there isn't value in this stuff, it's just not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave this to the people who are coming up to buy things for their house. And then next door you see again here's the getting rid of lots of clothes kind of sale. We see a lot of these as far as yard sales go, but I don't see anything I need there. But here, this one's got some Coleman lanterns and some Corvette or Chevy hubcaps, so I'm gonna stop here. Okay, so our next stop is the other side of Sturgis. It's uh, funny, you hop around and then all of a sudden everything's in a row and there's three here. The one across the street looks the most interesting because they've got an old wheel out in front and I figure if they've got old stuff sitting out front then they might be into old stuff. So we're going to take a look there first. The one next to it looks yeah, maybe more contemporary. And the one behind this container that we're parked by, well that one is all just baby clothes so I'm going to skip on that one. But let's go see what there is. Well it was a little windy to film there so we'll just show what uh, was in the pile there. This is really cool. This is an electric fireplace insert. It's got uh, everything you want. Fake orange fire, fake tinsel spinning around to make it glow. It's very silly. They're lots of fun and they sell pretty well, especially out in Washington State, which is where I'm headed next. So since this was $10 and I usually get about 30 to 35 for them, I was happy. And we can have popcorn by the fire because Here's this big old 1970s popcorn bowl, which I'm going to leave in the box because it's heavy, but it's got all the little bowls. This was, well, gosh, 
40 years ago when they started putting words all over everything and now people are putting words all over everything again and that's kind of where that came from and so I've noticed that people are liking those and it's only five dollars for the whole set. And then this third piece I got, this was ten dollars. It's marked on the bottom very well, Hall's Quality Kitchenware, which is Hall China. It was known for making all of those teapots. We did this Chinese red color in the late 1930s, and these ball pitchers are worth about 25 to 30 now. So for $10, I thought that was a decent thing to pick up too. So now we're headed on to the next town, which I believe is Morgan Field, and then Mexican food in Henderson. Can't wait. Well, here in Morgan Field, this is one of the bigger sales I've seen. You can see a whole lot of rows of stuff, and there's definitely some old furniture. I like the looks of that trunk there, although it needs some repair. And we're going to have some wind here, but let's take a look across the tables. Ooh, these guys are fun. Oh, and he's from Florida, and it says, take me home. I might just have to do that old restaurant where turquoise pitcher from a 60s cafe and yeah there's a couple of old pieces of furniture down here that's a very fancy divan that needs some fancy new upholstery and there's a fenton lavabo so this is the wall font with the glass piece that goes underneath it it looks like it's complete i'm going to ask the price on that and also here is Fenton milk glass that has been turned into a large swung piece. And I think I'm reading that it was 25 and now it's five. So for five bucks, if that's right, I'm gonna get that. So there on the right is Royal Hager and I'm gonna take that along with the Fenton lamp and then, ooh, there's a Viking piece. And a really scary looking squirrel. And then that looks like Noritake Lusterware. Wow. Well, this was a really fun stop on the yard sale here outside of Henderson, Kentucky. It's actually a shop, and I'll have to come back and videotape it sometime because he has a lot of really cool things, including a 1930s bus that he travels in when he's with his bluegrass band. But in the meantime, I got some neat stuff here and I will show you in a minute when we get somewhere that's a little less windy. Now here's one of the cooler things I've ever bought at a highway sale. This is Persian, or what we consider Iran now, of course. And this is all hand painted. And you have the royalty on the elephant, a couple of different scenes of that. And then you also have someone on a camel. So. This is really neat the way it's pieced together. It's all made of metal, but it's extremely lightweight. It's almost like sheet metal. And that makes me think that it's more likely to be something from the 20th century. I don't think it's necessarily wildly old, uh, but it does have wear on the bottom as it should. It looks like it's on, again, some sort of a uh, base metal. And I just thought that with all the hand painting and detail, it was really neat. This is an example of finding something in a place where it doesn't really seem to belong. I'm just outside of Henderson, Kentucky. You see the bridge to Indiana behind here, and that's the uh, old railroad bridge over the Ohio River. So uh, this is not the kind of thing I would expect to find in the middle of the heartland, and that's what made it seem like something to get, especially because it was priced at $50. And the only one I could find on eBay was something that they were offering for sale that was very similar to this, and they were asking $1,200. Now I have a feeling that that's a far-fetched price, but I believe that somewhere north of 50 is not an unrealistic price, so I'm excited to get this. And it'll give me a challenge. And then, the other thing I got is a special selection of high fashion hats. You've got the Phyllis Diller, with the little plastic tendrils coming out of it. Uh, this one in here is a nice orange one. I'm obviously not going to pull these off, but somebody the other day said, please wear more hats. So boy, I got a box full here, a couple of boxes. And the hat box is neat. This one's got a veil on it. This one is a nice blue color. Oh, here we go. Again, it's peach bloom velour, and this is something made out of imported fur, and it says union made, and of course, 
that means that it's American made and we haven't had a millinery intru, uh, industry in this country probably since the 1960s. Jackie Kennedy did not wear hats and that pretty much killed the women wearing hats thing. Um, this one has nice netting. You always want to make sure that this is intact. I paid about $5 a piece for these. They sell for 10 or 12 typically, unless there's something really fancy about them. And that's when you get to this. I'm going to be careful because with the wind, I don't want the feathers to blow away. But this hat band, any of these little bands made of feathers, and this one with the orange and chartreuse is a great color out of the 50s. It's got the uh, maybe 60s even. It's got the New York label in it. And this one is probably worth about 25 so All in all, not a bad price for these. It's just fun to have a good selection. And if they'll fit on my big head, then they'll fit on the uh, average glamanista who wants to wear something like this. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Today we're headed west and we are going to finish up what we can of the 6880 sale. That's Highway 68 slash Highway 80. They merge together and they go 400 miles. And we did a good chunk of the central and eastern portions yesterday. Today, I'm at a high knob cemetery in Kentucky along the roadside. We're in the rural area and you see a lot of these old family and local community grave sites where there really isn't a town anymore in these parts. It's uh, an interesting fact that cemeteries were actually the first places that people used as parks. In Philadelphia in the 1820s, I believe, they started saying, gee, we need to start setting aside city parks because everyone was hanging out in the cemeteries all the time. So things have changed a little bit. It's very quiet here today, but uh, we're off to where the action is. So let's go see what we find. <laughs> So today's first stop is at a place that obviously has a sense of humor and they also were antique dealers and said that they've got a barn full of stuff that they're selling off. So we'll take a look and see if there's any bargains now. This place is really cute actually. They've got it set up and you can tell she was a dealer because she's got a little bit of a flair for uh, the decorating but everything is negotiable so we're going to see if there's anything we want. I already put a glass doorknob up at the front. I like the uh, pedestal sink honestly I'm not going to buy it because it's too big for me to manage but at one and a quarter that's a pretty good deal because the new ones and this is definitely an old one the new ones are selling for I think about three times that much uh, let's see here that's McCoy no actually that's Robinson Ramsbottom a lot of people make this mistake RRP is Robinson Ramsbottom company Roseville, Ohio, and a lot of people call it Roseville. It's not. The Roseville company was not actually in Roseville, believe it or not. So that just makes it even more confusing. Oh, let's see. Cafe creamers and sugars. They're cute. I don't see anything really unusual. I'm just looking to see if anything is railroad. The bird is cute, but I think his little tail... No, that's where his tail stopped. Yeah, he's kind of sweet. I'd want to get them for about half, but she's pretty negotiable today, so that's a maybe. Horse bookends. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh there that. we go. Yes, I have sold this very well. Oh, but 25. See, I think see that's about what it's worth. We'll, we'll see. If she'll do, you know, if she'll do half, I'd take it. Caribe. This was made in Puerto Rico. We actually spent a lot of money setting up ceramic production in Puerto Rico to try to help the economy there, but it didn't last too long because it was really heavy and it's hard to ship it all the way from thousands of miles. Yeah, yeah this is all cafe where Manger Hotels. That's kind of cool. That little one. Yeah, interesting. Oh, yes. Ceramic horse for six dollars. It's cute. And this guy, I like him because he's got the well-painted eyes. They're lightweight. They're actually Japanese, but that's not bad. I think we'll see if we can get a better deal on him. Old 
old mug with the horse. And then these have horseshoe bottoms. Just those. Kind of like those. Oh, yes. That one is another one that's McCoy, and we'll see if this one has a mark. Nope, no mark other than made in USA at the bottom. And we'll see how flexible she is today. Hi. Okay. Well, cool. Let's uh, take these out and see. Yeah, the rocking horse is actually really neat. It's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, he's actually really a good... Well, that turned out to be fun. We got to meet some chickens and a very lazy dog and a nice lady who turns out to have an antique booth in the same mall I do. And so she let me have everything that I took for half price, which was perfect because she understood needing to make money as a dealer. So I got a little gravy boat that matches a set of china that I have that already has horses on it and some other really fun stuff, a McCoy planter. So we'll show you a little bit of a haul later. And now we're at the next place. And it looks more like your average suburban home, except we are far, far from the suburbs. So we're near Lake Barkley and Kentucky Lake, which comprise land between the lakes. And we are about to go over a really cool bridge, but we're gonna stop first and shop here and see what we find. Well, I didn't find anything at that place. I saw one thing, it was a very nice handmade dulcimer, but they wanted full price for it. So I said, no thanks. We're going over the new 6880 bridge. This is the Cumberland River where it widens into Lake Barkley. And that is because there is a huge dam at the end of the other end of this. This is the land between the lakes. This is a national recreation area here. There's a lot of neat things to see and do in it. It is completely unpopulated. They made everybody move out when they started clearing to do the dams here. There's a lot of old families that still have some resentment over that. But it's a wonderful area in terms of all sorts of recreational things and natural wonders. There's a bunch of white pelicans out on that little island there. I was surprised to find out that pelicans come this far north, but they do. They come right up the Mississippi River. The pelicans go as far north as almost the Arctic. Okay, so we're seeing the beginning of a few fall colors, especially in the sumac and some of the maples. And then we get to the other lake, which is Kentucky Lake. There's some nice rocky and some sandy beaches here. A lot of sports fishing. And then this is the Highway 6880 bridge. This is the one that was rebuilt after a barge ran into it a few years ago and basically closed this highway down. We seem like we're in the middle of nowhere, but it's actually a large throughput for trucking and other things. So that was actually a real problem but they got it replaced and it was time and so you can see off in the distance there's sailboats we'll see if we can bring those in a little closer they're going to look very small on the horizon and then this brings us into marshall county and we'll be back in civilization and we should see more sails and more stuff to look at after we get through a little more nice scenery. It's a very pretty drive. This is, this is part of the reason that people like coming on this sail. And we're just about to, yeah, we see turtles down on that branch. And we're going to be turning off here because 68 and 80 split. And we're following 68 because that is where the stuff is. So we're at the hitching post and this has an antique store in one end and some vendors out in the front and homemade ice cream as you see. So I think we're gonna get some mint chocolate chip and then we'll 
go junking again and see what's down on the other end. This place has been around since the 40s. This would have been right when the first of the lakes came in as part of the Tennessee Valley Authority. And you've got this great, well, fiberglass horse, but that is a genuine Victorian, I believe that's a Surrey with the fringe on top. There was a song back in the old days that talked about that. All these carriages had different purposes back then. This one looks like it dates to probably about 1890. And it looks like it could probably take a, another ride. Well, this place is cool. It's got a lot of uh, old buildings. This looks like it was probably a hotel and I suspect it's earlier than the store. The store says 1941, but I'd say by the roof line waving along in what used to be this uh, lodging here that this might date back before the lakes were put in. And then on the end here, whoops, sorry about that. So welcome to Aurora, Kentucky. We're here on the 6880 highway sale at the old hitching post and country store. And the country store is next to me on the other side here. It's a neat looking old general store and I like the uh, sign. It says uh, they've got fresh goods from the east, which at one time would have been a big deal because that would have meant they had to be brought over the mountains. And gigas for girls, tomfooleries for boys, fancies for women and substantials for men. I didn't find anything substantial in my looking here, but I did find that back here is also, a, this is one of these old highway attractions that's got neat old stuff. And it's gotten to be really old stuff now. Uh, in the 40s when they started this, these would have been old things that would have been in people's barns. Now it's really hard to find these, but they've got a whole bunch of different carriages from the 1870s, 80s, and 90s. You've got a farm wagon on the right. You've got uh, something with a little bit of a Conestoga style cover there. An old buggy, uh, doctor's buggy with the roof on top. And then the old rural delivery route for the mail. That would have been 1890s when they started doing the rural delivery. So this is pretty cool. I like these old roadside attractions when they still have this neat old stuff. And yes, of course, if you trespass, you will be shot. And if you survive, you will be shot some more because nothing like shooting. So the hands are from those latex molds. Uh, a lot of those companies closed about 1990. They're usually dated from them. And we're seeing the hands all over the place now, but they're starting to sell really fast because people are using them for display. They're using them for macabre Halloween things. So, woo. and it's a neat old building too, I'm noticing. This is an old log cabin with the split rails. And you can see that they've kind of puttied in between to keep the uh, airflow down, but it's got the old uh, stone aggregate base. And so this is one of the few original buildings left from when this was a very primitive part of the country before electricity, before roads, before all this tourism. Now it has air conditioning. Here's these old metal porch chairs that we are seeing so many people go crazy for now. And Kentucky is where I first saw them. I think there were a lot of them sold here back in the day and a lot of them still exist, but they're using these for people to actually sit and play checkers on. So unfortunately that means they are not for sale, but I will look for some that are. So I wanna hold up some things and show you what I got on the last day of the sojourn and Highway 6880 West. I'm sure there was a lot more. I didn't have a lot of time because I was actually going to FedEx to pick up my book order for uh, people who have been waiting and your books are in the mail, I promise. In the meantime, I did get these. Now I paid $20 for these. I'm not shy about stepping up for bookends if I think they're nice because I usually get 45 for a set like this. These are older. They're pot metal with silvering, but these are still going to date back to probably 1930s and they've got the horseshoe in the bottom for luck. And so uh, I'm not really afraid to step up for horse things because people who are into equestrian sports generally are people who really love it and they have money. So that's not a bad thing to do. The rest of this stuff I only paid seven or eight dollars each for and that was a pretty good deal actually. What's nice about this doorknob is that it's got the escutcheon so basically you've got your keyhole and everything you would need to attach to an old door. So that made that a good price. This set should sell for about 18 to 20. 
This horse plaque I've had before and I've gotten around uh, 15 to 20 for him. And he's Japanese actually, but he's really got a good look. He's really well painted. This is when the Japanese wear started to really improve in quality. You can see the little mark here, but the Made in Japan label is gone now. It would have been right there and that would have, uh, I'm not sure which company did this. I think maybe Norcrest. And then this piece I had to buy because I have had a set of this for the first time ever and it did really well. Half of it sold immediately and I think the other half I just sold in Kansas. And so this is now the only piece in this line I have, but this is cafe where it was cafe au lait, which is what Buffalo China called their buff pattern here. But it was made for some particular restaurant and we have not determined which yet but there isn't a lot of this around and this should be about a 20 to 25 dollar piece and then this last piece is mccoy i bought a green one recently that i showed you that wasn't marked this one is not marked in the usual way either other than it says made in usa down at the bottom 18 to 24 is probably about retail on this color but I'm going to peel that off because, again, I only paid $7 for it, so I was happy to get it. And so that wraps up the haul portion. I just love doing the highway sales. There's always a ton of interesting stuff to buy, and they go on and on and on. So next year, they won't all be on the same weekend in all likelihood. They'll probably get back to where they have them on their own specific weekends throughout the summer. So look for the calendars and plan a trip around one because you can start at one end and 400 miles later, you'll be broke, but you'll have a van full of stuff to resell. Well, it's been a lot of fun bringing you things along the 6880 sale and these highway sales in Kentucky. I see in the back in this parking lot, there is an early 50s Dodge. I love that color. You know, I've got a thing for old cars, so it's great to have in the background. And it's great to have you with me again. I'm George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and here on YouTube at least every Monday and Wednesday. So we'll be back with more adventures soon, and thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!